They both right. a apparently tried to pull one over on Bar's stool and it didn't succeed. So I don't think that's a very good claim, Alex versus Sophia. Sophia against Alex is even dumber. If they choose not to go through with their commitments that they contractually signed, then Barstool can sue them for breach of contract. If I represented Alex, I'd say make the best deal you can to salvage things and dump Sophia, get rid of that boyfriend. Sophia's like, I want to retain you. <laughs> what would you advise her during this whole entire situation? I, I advise her to propose a mediation with all the participants and a kumbaya retired judge and, and throw herself on the mercy of Barstool and Alex and Hey guys, and welcome to Mango Tea. If you're new here, my name is Steven Mango, and I'm a drama channel that spills the tea on all your favorite beauty influencers and YouTubers. And today we have my husband Jeff with me, who is an attorney, and we are going to be answering all of your legal questions surrounding the Caller Daddy podcast. If you guys don't know what the Caller Daddy podcast is, it is the number one rated iTunes podcast. It is hosted by Alexander Cooper and Sophia Franklin, two friends or now former friends who hosted one of the most successful sex podcasts. And there was a whole rift and drama between them and Barstool Sports, who presents the Color Daddy podcast. This is over millions of dollars. There's been fights and feuds, and this was trending on Twitter the other day. And there is a lot of drama about this. I don't know if you guys know about the Color Daddy podcast or anything like that, but if you guys are interested in drama, and they have a YouTube channel with, I think, like 200,000 subscribers. So they're also kind of technically YouTubers that have made vlogs about their podcast. So check out the Color Daddy podcast, and then you guys can rewatch this or check out yesterday's video. I did a whole entire video about all of this situation with Caller Daddy. If you guys want all the tea about this, tune into this video. But Jeff is going to be answering all of your burning legal questions about Caller Daddy. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. So the very first question we have is, can Alex and Sophia renegotiate their salary or terms in the middle of their three-year contract? So as I discussed in the last video, Barstool and Caller Daddy signed a three-year contract together. So now that they probably never expected their podcast to go and make millions of dollars. Now they're saying, hey, like we don't want $75,000, $100,000. Like we want an actual cut of the pie. So given that we're in the middle of this contract, are they able to renegotiate in any way if they already signed the contract? Well, are they able to negotiate? Yes. But I think the better thing would have been to, to go to Barstool and say, look, we have a year left on our contract. We're making you a ton of money. Uh, we'd like to stay here when our contract is up. So why don't you give us a raise to X number of dollars and then we'll commit to a long-term deal or let's now make a deal for the next five years, recognizing that this will replace the old deal that we have so that we get to share in some of the profits more substantially than we've been getting so far. That would have been the thing to do. Yeah, but I think, understandably, Alex and Sophia at the time when they were both in the middle of realizing like, hey, we're worth millions of dollars, Barstool is probably not going to give us the full amount of money. If we just went on our own independently or brought the show to another network, there's probably millions of dollars worth of ads and merch sales and all these different things. So for Barstool, why would they want to renegotiate if they're on the positive side of things? They're the ones that are making five, ten plus million dollars probably on the podcast probably doesn't benefit them to want to do that when Alex and Sophia probably think, hey, we can maybe get the intellectual property and go off on our own. Yes. So I don't think Barstool really necessarily needs to or would want to probably renegotiate when they're making all the money. Why, why do they care? They're going to lock them in. There's a famous Aesop's fable, which you're not familiar with, that applies to this situation, which is don't kill the goose that lays the golden egg. And so right. for the Barstool's perspective, why wouldn't they want to keep their stars at earning them Boku bucks happy by giving them more and locking them into a long-term deal? And for these two ladies, they cannot go to another network and bring their show with them because they signed a contract. 
So don't you think that what a lot of people are upset with Sophia about, but what I actually kind of see why they started going that direction was saying, oh, why don't we see if anyone else is offering money for the show? So say like the Wondery Network, which that they were allegedly trying to pitch the show to and Sophia's boyfriend, all that sort of drama stuff that was going on. If they say, oh, wow, Wondery's offering five million, they can use that as a renegotiation tactic and go to Barstool saying, hey, Wondery Network's willing to offer us five million, not that they're able to sell the intellectual property at this point, right. but they could say, hey, they're offering five million. You guys are paying us 150,000 or even a half a million dollars or whatever it is. Look at if we end in another year, even if we stayed here, we're just gonna go pop over there for the five million dollars. Or they could also say, hey, you know what? We'll go and start recording the show over there. How much are you willing to sell the IP for? And they say a million dollars. Then they can go to the Wonder Network and say, hey, pay the million dollars to Barstool. We're gonna make you guys five million. So it's gonna be more beneficial if you just pay off the Barstool people and we come to your network. Yeah, but the Barstool people had the contractual rights. So this is why I said if they were above board and they went and they said, look, we we're getting 75,000. No one expected this to be as successful as it is. You're making 5 million on us. Right. Great for you, but I think that you should show some good faith and give us a bump to X number of dollars. And in return, we will sign a five-year deal or what have you. Okay. Or, or they could say, we'll, we'll um, commit now. We're, we've gotten interest from other people, but you know we have a commitment here. We want to finish that. And we'd like to stay here if the terms are right. If not, we understand. Okay, so that I didn't mean it. I was trying to interrupt because it kind of ties into what you're saying. Is mm -hmm. Can Barstool force Color Daddy to complete an additional year or the 18 months remaining of the podcast as they are Barstool employees under contract. So that's kind of mm. the same question. The answer is a two-part answer. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's funny because these are the type of things that would like turn me on. Like I like when someone talks about like smart things and like quotes like the, what do you call it? The Constitution. <laughs> like I actually like that sort of thing. I'm like, oh, I married someone who's smart and intelligent. Like I don't know about these type of things. So that's no, why I like don't. these type of things actually interest me. Too, so um, yeah. I, I just so anyways, in any event, the Thirteenth Amendment to the Constitution prohibits involuntary servitude. Another word for that is slavery. So right. you can't force someone to work for you. But if they choose not to go through with their commitments that they contractually signed, then Barstool can sue them for breach of contract. And that breach of contract would be substantial because they bargained for, in return, for 75000 each. They were going to do X number of episodes. If they don't do X number of episodes, Barstool can recover the loss of revenue that mm. they missed out on as a result of those two ladies not doing the contractually required number of shows. So that ties in exactly what you were just saying into this question others have been asking is, can Barstool sue Alex and Sophia for breach of contract or for not recording? As Barstool said, they've lost out on 300,000 to 400,000 in advertising revenue because what happened was in the last couple of weeks over coronavirus and part of what was supposed to be like their contractual negotiations, they said, hey, we're not even gonna record unless you're willing to basically put up, I don't know if that's seen as like kind of like a blackmail type of tactic of being like, hey, unless you're willing to throw us some more money, we're just not gonna record because as long as we're recording, if you are just gonna be like, oh, you know, we're not giving you a raise, or we're not willing to talk about it at this point, we'll talk about it in the future, mm -hmm. they don't have the negotiating power at that point. So when they're doing this and they're holding out, now Barcel's like, hey, like we're paying you to record this podcast, you're refusing to do it because you want more money. Could they go after that lost revenue? Do they have an actual case bar stool yes. against them? I just said so. But how much money could they recover? Just the advertising? Is there just, what would they be able to do at that point? Would they say? They would seek to recover the amount of revenue that they would normally have been anticipated to recover as a result of the missed episodes. So if they were making 400,000 an episode, times however many episodes they were were required to do, that would be the damages. They might even be able to bring in an expert witness to say, mm. with the pandemic, people aren't going out, they're sitting at home, they need diversion, Netflix is through the roof, Hulu's through the roof, 
maybe even I would listen to those two ladies. Uh, so now it's an even podcast, bigger, so it's even thing. bigger amount. But that might be ruled to be speculative. But think of how long that would take them to even go through filing a claim and litigation and going to court and hiring experts and then being able to recover from two podcasts. So it's not saying that they don't have money, but on the sense that again, if they're trying to recover, no one just probably has five hundred thousand sitting in the bank, a million dollars sitting in the bank, right? So for Barstool to spend all that money and effort just to sue two podcast hosts. After all, but it's actually very interesting too because even in this negotiation, they're saying, "Hey, we'll give you the intellectual property, stay for one year, we'll pay you a five hundred thousand dollar each, and then we'll give you the show." So it's like you would have to work versus if they just stayed or other issues or whatever they tried to fight for the intellectual property. It would take years and years of trying to fight for that when I think they were being reasonable to say, "Hey, if you just hang on for another year." six months, whatever, we'll give you the show at the very end of it. I think that they're seeing the dollar signs as a lot of Hollywood, other executives and people do this in the agent type of world and these big like people like CAA, William Morris Endeavor, all these like big talent agents are saying like, hey, we have like the powerhouse lawyers that we can help try to recover your show for you. We'll take the intellectual property, we'll sue because we know the value. Where William Morris, we have millions of dollars will sue Barstool for you. So this is what I think that they were doing to Alex and Sophia, the agents, especially Sophia's boyfriend who works as an HBO executive. I think they were chirping in their ear to say, we can recover the intellectual property. We can try to get you another deal. We can have you guys go independent. We can do all of that for you. You have to realize your value that the show is worth five, 10, 20 million, or however much over the long term. You're looking so crazy at me, but I think well, that I'm, that's I'm what they're saying. Well, I'm waiting for your question. Not, it's just an observation of what these mm. other people are well, saying. So they're saying, oh, you're trying to worry about a couple hundred thousand dollars in salary. Who cares? Even if you get sued, who cares? Like there's a bigger company and brand that we can try to help you do this. So I think it's been this whole strategy that backfired for all this money. It would have been much better for them to simply be above board and go to Barstool and tell them what they wanted, why they wanted it, and dangle something that would be a value to Barstool in front of them. Then none of this would have happened. But apparently the reason that I heard they didn't want to do that is because they didn't want to have that man have egg on his face. Right, so that's what I was the saying boyfriend. with Sophia's boyfriend. Yeah. So because Sophia was trying to hold up because there's just all this drama of HBO versus Barstool and then trying to have the boyfriend get them out of their contract and get the intellectual property, move them over. It's some sort of like personal feud or dynamic to it. But I think that, like I said, when you have someone talking in your ear who's a Hollywood executive type telling you, hey, your show's worth millions, you're making peanuts, protest, don't work, let them you know, play hardball with these guys. And even after getting offered a half a million dollars or however much, refuse it. Your show is worth so much more. Think of the long term. Don't just think about the one year thing. Go off on your own. You can make your own merch and sell it. You'll be making millions in a year anyway. So mm. don't try to just play good with these people. You know, when you're thinking of your employer as evil or like these bad guys, it's easy to have someone say, hey, you know, hold out. Maybe they, they'll throw you out of the contract and then you can you know, take control of the intellectual property. But anyways, How'd that let's work go in. For them? Well, let's go into the next yeah. question. Okay, so has Barstool breached their side of the contract by originally they weren't really focusing on call or daddy in any way besides like basically making like little podcast cover art and like different things. Like they weren't producing the show. They weren't editing the episodes. They weren't coming up with the topics. Like Alex and Sophia were creating all the content it was Alex's show initially. They're supposed to come on this network that's supposed to lift them up. Some would claim, yeah, they already did that. They already they wouldn't be as famous if they were off the Barstool network. But Barstool's a sports network too. It's not like they really are in like the same vertical of doing like sports content, for example, right? They I didn't say Oh wow, it's a Barstool thing. I know what Barstool was. I just listened because I like the podcast, mm -hmm. right? So most of the women, if they're say ninety percent women audience, may not have come on board because of Barstool. And gay men. Gay men or whomever is straight men. I mean, so many people are listening to this, but it's just the fact that mm -hmm. they weren't necessarily like benefited directly from Barstool to where the Barstool should get this huge cut, right? So did Barstool by not like editing the show, doing other things, like are they in some sort of breach of like, they didn't really do anything. Well, what did the contract the say? Did it? Did the contract say that Barstool had to edit the shows? Did it say they had to create the content? Did it say they had to do X, Y, and Z? I, I don't know the answer to that unless you see the contract. But I suspect if this was one of them's idea that 
she's the one that came up with the subjects and she's the one that edited it. And so probably the only requirement Barstool had was to provide a platform for the podcast to be broadcast on. And maybe it was in hindsight, not a great deal for these two ladies, which is why you renegotiate in an above board fashion rather than all this cloak and dagger stuff, which backfired. Can Barstool keep the intellectual property or does it belong to Alex for starting the podcast initially and she and Sophia are the ones creating the weekly content for the show and doing all of the work? Now with this whole intellectual property thing, what do you advise or well, what would you say to them with the intellectual property being the big issue surrounding all of this? I, I could advise and I'd say if someone's offering you to give you the, the intellectual property, that must mean they own it. They do. And so if they own it, it's theirs to do with what they want, and they're offering it to give it to you after a year, just finish the year out. It's a no-brainer. I have to wonder why, what was the downside to the two ladies agreeing to the Barstool, uh, Barstool proposal? The only thing I can think was that, indeed, they didn't want that man to have egg on his face. Right, and that's what Sophia's boyfriend is kind of like the catalyst in this whole entire situation. And I think that obviously they didn't handle it in a professional way to really understand like what's at stake for their whole podcast. Like it could be destroyed overnight because one guy is saying, hey, go off and get another deal and you're gonna make more money or go solo. And then all of a sudden, boom, overnight, it's like everything kind of changes. But I think that there's just a lot to this whole entire situation that I think that even in the beginning they were naive to sign the type of contract they probably signed. Then they were trying to renegotiate in the middle and then protesting during this whole entire time. Then you get what you want. You say like, oh, we'll give you the intellectual property. But I think that, like I said, they're valuing it in the course of, okay, if they have to work another year and there's millions of dollars at stake and we're still only getting 500, it's great. It's a good deal. But then they were even offering 50-50 stake in the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And then Sophia didn't want to do that or whatever. And then now Alex is getting 75%. So why would she then lower herself out when she's now saying, I'm doing all the work, I'm editing the show, like there's all these things. Why would I go and bring Sophia back in when she was the one that's causing all this trouble anyways? For the podcast, like almost like she's replaceable probably. I'm sure she could get through. another woman to be her second banana. Or even better, get a gay man to be her co-host. Are you suggesting that he would be a good co-host for the show? Well, of course I would. Wouldn't that be good if, if you ended up on the show, they say this, and Alex, oh yeah, that's great. And then you are now the new co-host of well, Daddy after all this. Can you imagine? should have a gay man as the co-host. Oh, yes. Well, okay. But I'm probably too conservative for it. Now, another question that was coming in is, could Barstool actually sue Sophia's boyfriend, Peter, the HBO guy, for interfering and interjecting in the Barstool employees' contract and negotiations? That's an interesting question. There's a tort called intentional interference with prospective economic advantage. That's the cause of action. And essentially what it says is that you did certain acts which you knew were going to interfere with my ability to make a living or make a profit on a particular venture and you did so with ill intent, with motive, and the motive would be greed and to line your own pockets. And so that would be an interesting cause of action for Barstool to explore doing the boyfriend. It probably at the end of the day wouldn't amount to much, but it might be an excellent negotiating tactic. Does Alex have a claim against Sophia versus does Sophia have a claim against Alex? Alex could say, hey, Sophia, now you're going and ruining my money, my contract, my job, my contract, losing out on the intellectual property, perhaps with Barstool. You ruin the show, you're crashing the profits because your boyfriend interjected. I'm willing mm -hmm. to sign the deal. You're the co-host of the show. And now our fans and other people are looking at us in a negative way because now you're going and doing all these things. So now we're gonna lose viewership. And does Sophia have a claim against Alex oh, or I don't know whatever they would sue for, but again, Sophia trying to come at them for maybe slandering her through the boyfriend, like making it seem like, oh, now Barstool, you're my employer. You're now saying, oh, you know, you're talking negatively about your employee and now saying that my boyfriend was interjecting and now my name is being mm. dragged in the well, But starting with Alex coming for Sophia for their yeah, contract negotiation there's an, there's or whatever a, it would be. Th there's a famous saying in the law 
those who seek equity must do equity, meaning you cannot come with unclean hands to court and expect relief. So if these two ladies were plotting to screw over Barstool and get out of their contract and stop working, you cannot then turn around and say to your co-conspirator, oh, this is all your fault. They both had their hands in it. They both right. ap apparently tried to pull one over on Bar's stool and it didn't succeed. So I don't think that's a very good claim, Alex versus Sophia. Sophia against Alex is even dumber. Slander uh, is a claim for which there's an absolute defense, if it's true. So if it's true that you did X, Y, and Z, then it's not slander, it's simply truth. So what would your advice be to actually resolve this claim legally with all this color daddy and barstool drama? I'd advise that, well, wait, who would I be representing that you want me to give advice to? Well, just if all three of them are your clients. Well, that couldn't be that. Separately, that, if, yeah, if, that, your, if your client was barstool, if your client was mm -hmm. Alex, and if it was Sophia. So just going through. If I was barstool, I'd play hardball and I'd get uh, Alex back and remount the show and either get another co-host or have her do it on her own. Would you advise Barstool to sue for the loss of uh, ad revenue or anything? Well, not, Given if, if, they not were. if they're going to take back Alex. Right, if they were They could though. sue Sophia for it, though. Let's <laughs> uh, go after Sophia for it, okay. But yes, if I, re if I represented Alex, I'd say make the best deal you can to salvage things and dump Sophia Go You're always like trying to get rid of Sophia. Oh, no. <laughs> You're like not very complimentary. You haven't even, <laughs> don't even know what her side on that. No, but I'm, I'm just that. saying, uh -huh. but to me, the, in the moral hierarchy, she's at the lowest point. Then Barstool is here and Alex is sort of in between them. Because so she should do her own show or she should have Call Her Daddy bring in someone else, what you're saying, bringing you as the co-host, which is basically well, your me. motive of why you're advising this is because, no, because you want Alex to bring you I'm, in as the co-host. I'm too conservative. I'm, too, I'm way too You wouldn't concerned. be able to talk about All, sex you, and straight yeah, people and not that like they stuff. do. No, okay, okay, absolutely not. Right. Okay. So you're you wouldn't be a good full time co host, no. but you can come in for an episode or for the gay episode. Is what I don't claiming. think so. Other than that, okay. So Sophia, what would you say? Sophia's like, I want to retain you. <laughs> what would you advise her during this whole entire I I advise her to propose a mediation with all participants and a kumbaya retired judge and and throw herself on the mercy of Barstool and Alex and see if she can get back in the good graces, be earnest and sincere and make amends for, for uh, the behavior. Get rid of that boyfriend, but um, try to get the best deal you can. But it, it just seems like it's now a little too late. I think that would have worked before that any of them spoke out. Do you think Sophia would have a claim against Barstool for them talking about her on the podcast without, again, it's their, their the employer, now they're going to speak out against her on her show. Was it, their, like... was it uh, depends on if what they're saying about her is true. If they say she, she tried to screw us over through her boyfriend and extort us for money to finish the season, that's all true. If they say she's a child molester, then that's yeah. But wouldn't it still be not in Barstool's favor to say anything about her in case that they do re reach a resolution? Then she's going back on the show, and then everyone might be making a little bit less money if the employer and the network is then making their own show, co-host or whatever their bigger show, making them be like, oh, Sophia's a little right. This but way I never or that recommended way, that the uh, Barstool go no, on but, the air and say stuff. I've never recommended that. That's what they did, and then the CEO of Barstool just made a thing on Spotify about them so I just think that there's like a lot of different back and forth with all these different people and like what they're saying and stuff like that and I think there's just legally with this whole entire thing it's a mess now with the podcast what's going on I think Sophia was dumb not to take Barstool's offer to say we'll still pay you a half a million to be with Barstool we'll give you a podcast we'll put it on the caller daddy feed like it's basically everything that she right. could probably want to have like the second best deal after she turned on the first half a million for the caller daddy hey we'll give you a half a million to your own show and she's still holding out into the whole thing so couldn't she just go since if it's not caller daddy 
couldn't she just go into her own podcast now anyways? It's not like she's doing it under Color Daddy. Right. Another question too is what if they went to the Wondery Network mm -hmm. and they did the show called Her Fathers or something similar with the name? Mm. Could they do that if they said left Barstool, left behind Color Daddy and said, screw you Barstool. And they go and they said, oh, we're starting a podcast called Her Fathers and it's basically the same podcast mm -hmm. under another name. Mm -hmm. Could Barstool then still go and sue them yes. over that? Yeah. Even if it's a different name, but it's still a sex podcast. Well, you wouldn't, they wouldn't be suing because they started a podcast with a different name. They'd be suing for the lost revenue from the time that they stopped working until the time that the contract had ended. Which so was over in the a year. Of the next year, right. year and a half. Even That's if they the changed amount, the name. That, well, but after the year, though, if, if they'd completed the year, they could have left and done a different podcast. Here's where Barstool had a problem and should have... Uh, acted differently. If you have a deal with someone and they're and you're paying them relative chicken feed and you're making millions and millions and millions, maybe the prudent thing would be to, to say, you know what, you're making us a ton of money, paying you chicken feed. No one knew that this was going to be so successful. Right. We're going to give you a raise to X amount and I bet a lot of this would have been avoided. So this was just basically not executed on a lot of different people's parts, right? They didn't play it well, Barstool didn't probably deal with things. There's the legal well version and then there's the moral version. They had no legal obligation to do what I just suggested, but that would have been the smart business thing to do. Mm. Okay guys, so that was all of your questions and all the ones that I came up regarding all this Caller Daddy drama. Again, as things progress, if anything else happens that's breaking drama news i'll break it here on my channel and maybe there'll be a whole nother episode of more legal questions i'm pretty much assuming that things with this whole color daddy situation are going to go in either one or two different directions either color daddy reboots with another co-host for sophia or again alex and sophia decide to go off if they ever become friends again and that's another option which i don't think that's happening because basically alex threw sophia under the bus to try to get her own deal or maybe her own show but again it was alex's podcast to begin with anyway so i mean i think that really sophia has the short end of the stick in this situation after she got a little bit greedy to probably try to want more money but her and alex were involved in it in the beginning because i think they both were kind of trying to bring the show to another network anyways and this all backfired i think in their face but i think alex will be coming back with a barstool show and i'm really curious to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below on this video what we talked about about this whole color daddy drama situation again check out my other video i did on the the Caller Daddy drama. If you guys want to hear everything that happened, if you guys still don't really know what's going on. I will say there's a lot more interesting drama than all this James Charles business. Please make sure that you are subscribed here on my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to cover drama-wise in the comment box down below. I'm going to be posting more videos here on Mango Tea very shortly for you guys. Thank you to Jeff for coming on and giving his legal analysis about all this Color Daddy drama. Also, make sure to watch my other videos Video on the Color Daddy situation so you guys can be filled in on everything that's been going on with Color Daddy. Thank you so much for watching guys. I love each and every single one of you and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.